All right, here we are. Moved by Deputy Mayor Turton, second by Councilor Thurston. The town of Minto resumes an open council. Anybody opposed? Seeing none, good. Uh, reporting under close, moved by uh, Councilor Gutson, second by Councilor Anderson. The town of Minto received a report regarding personal information about a dental individual and further the council approved the confidential direction given to staff. Anybody opposed? That's carried. Previous meetings. Uh, Moved by Councillor McKenzie and Secretary Deputy Mayor Turton that the minutes of the Town of Minto March 15th, 2022 regular council meeting and the March 15th, 2022 closed session meeting be approved. Anybody opposed? I just carried. Other items that could disclose, I have one. Does anybody else got anything? Let me know later. Uh, moved by Councillor Drixon, second by Councillor Elliott, the Town of Minto Council convenes in the Committee of Adjustment. Anybody opposed? That is carried. So we're going into a public hearing. Um, any decision reached in this, I'll, I'll, leave, I'll chair this public meeting and uh, consider the, the minor variance application MV 2022-06 Palmerston Area Arena Expansion. Any decision reached by this committee today cannot be used to set a precedent. Each application considered by the committee is dealt with on its own merits and no two applications exactly the same. I will ask the Secretary Treasurer Rob, to state the following information. Thank you, Chair Bridge. Uh, the property subject to the proposed minor variance application is legally described as Survey Grains Park Flax Mill Lot East Side Queen, Survey Clark and Anderson Park Park Lot A, B, C, Wallace Concession 10, Part Lot 18 in the former town of Palmerston, Town of Minto, County of Wellington, and is municipally known as 520 Cavan Street in the town of Minto. The subject property is plus or minus 10.22 acres, or plus or minus 4.14 hectares in size. The purpose and effect of the application is to permit the construction of the Palmerston Arena expansion. The expansion includes four new change rooms, a new entrance, and a new universal washroom. The applicant is seeking relief from section 28.2.4 of the Town of Mento's Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw 01-86 as amended. Section 28.2.4 states that the minimum interior side yard setback is 3.0 meters or 10 feet, whereas 0.61 meters or two feet is proposed. The setback relief requested is for the interior side yard of the town owned property that directly abuts property owned by the Palmerston Agricultural Society. Additional relief may be considered at this meeting. The notices were mailed to the property owners within 200 feet or 60 meters of the subject property, as well as the applicable agencies and posted on the subject property on March 11, 2022. Reports and comments have been received by our planning technician, as well as the county junior planner. I am going to advise that there are no speakers registered for, to participate in this public hearing. And that's back to you, Chair Bridge. Thank you. And uh, I will call on the town planner, uh, planning technician, I uh, think Ashley's there. Go ahead, Ashley. So as Annalie mentioned, this minor variance is for the Palmerston Arena expansion, and it's required to facilitate the construction for that. The arena is technically, the arena property is technically split between two separate owner, owners, one being the town and one being the Palmerston Agricultural Society. So as such, you need interior side yard setback relief from the side of the arena that abuts the Palmerston Egg Society property. Um, as mentioned, the minimum setback for open space is 10 feet, whereas two feet will be required. Um, so town staff are satisfied the application is minor, desirable, and appropriate for the subject property and maintains the general intent and purpose of the official plan and zoning bylaw. The expansion will benefit and serve the local community. And we do note that town staff, county staff, MBC, and source water protection all have no concerns with the proposed variance. It really is just a technicality. Uh, no additional comments or concerns were raised by external agencies or neighboring landowners, and we are recommending the committee grant the relief requested. Thank you, Ashley. And I'll just uh, I'll wait till the end for questions. Um, does uh, Matthew or Steve, I see Steve's on. Did Steve want to say anything on this? Uh, Steve or Matthew? There he is. Go ahead, Steve. Sure, Mayor Bridge, I can make a few comments on this. Obviously, this is for the arena expansion, as indicated within the initial comments there uh, that we received here this evening. Um, what we're looking at, as I'm sure Council is aware, is the expansion on the east side of the existing community center to uh, allow for the addition of four dress rooms, the barrier-free washroom, a new vestibule, vestibule and a corridor. Um, 
But really what we're looking at is a total of a 20, 26 foot expansion to the east side of the arena, which will allow for dressing rooms to accommodate uh, 16 feet, eight inches in width and a corridor being seven feet, four and a half, which is much, uh, much larger and, and better than the existing corridor at the arena right now. So that is really the basis for the, for the need for the minor variants to, to move this project forward. Thanks, Steve. Okay, uh, ask anybody, uh, anybody on the committee have any questions? Seeing none, I just want to, I just want to make a comment, Steve, while, while you're here. I really appreciate uh, all your hard work on this. I know we hired you, but at the end of the day, you're, you're a local person and uh, you took a lot of passion to this. I know, I'm sure we got more than our, our bang or our buck on it. And I've had opportunity to see you a couple of times working with this project and I'm sure you're excited to see it started and uh, you got a bit of work to do yet, I'm assuming, because you're going to have to watch it uh, for us as we went through it. And that's a big job as well. So thank you for uh, being here tonight and uh, thanks for your participation. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah I just, uh, Steve also, I've been part of the committee since uh, day one and uh, I'm very impressed with uh, what you're doing. I, I thank you very much. You're, you're, uh, your part in this has is, is just been amazing. Helped us through it all. We didn't we didn't say no to you too too often. Um, actually, the whole group should be thanked. Uh, they were easy to work with. A lot of good ideas went into it. One thing I want to do the best for you is that going to be like double doors going into the building, or how's that? The no, that's the best through you, Mr. Mayor, the uh, the doors to the uh, entering the arena vestibule will be from uh, from the uh, sorry the north side of the building off the parking lot. They okay. will be a double slider door. From there, you'll enter the vestibule and turn right, and there'll be a double slider there on the vestibule. Automatic oh. sliders. Yeah, great. I'm trying to I, for some reason, I thought it was coming in from the east, but that's no. great. Thanks. Thanks, Ron, and thank you, Ron, for your participation and your help on this through the uh, group as well. Okay, I've got uh, two, I think we'll go with the positive decision if we can, Annalene, if that yes, would work. Certainly, Chair Bridge. Uh, it would be uh, that the Town of Mental Committee of Adjustment approves the application by the Corporation of the Town of Mental for Property, legally described as Survey Grains, part Flax Mill, lot East Side Queen, Survey Clark and Anderson, part Park, lot ABC Wallace, concession 10, part lot 18 in the former Town of Palmerston, Town of Mental, County of Wellington, municipally known as 520 Cabin Street in the Town of Mento to provide relief from section 28.2.4 to reduce the interior side yard setback to 0.61 meters or two feet. So you would just need a mover and a seconder. Mover and a seconder for that. Uh, Deputy Mayor Turton, Councillor Elliott. Um, anybody opposed? That is carried. Okay, then I, any, I'll end by saying anyone, anyone wishing to receive a copy of the notice of decision of the Committee of Adjustments in respect to the minor variance application must make a written request to the clerk of the town of Middle at 5941 Highway 89 Harrison NOG 1Z or email at handmean at town.mento.on.ca. I'll join the public meeting. Very good. Thank you. Okay, next up is. Moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Gunston, the Town of Minto Committee, uh, Town of Minto Committee of Adjustment convenes the Committee of the Whole. Anybody opposed? That is carried. Uh, we have no other public meetings, no, no delegations. I'll turn the chair over to Deputy Mayor Turt. Assume the chair. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Yes, thank you, Mayor Bridge. We have an uh, interesting discussion tonight with our, uh, with our friend Jeremy Brown and Colin Smith in reference to our insurance. So I'm not sure if those two young men are, uh, are on yet. But, uh, so, uh, Gore, do you want to lead this discussion, please? Yeah, certainly. Um, I'm going to let uh, Jeremy and Colin do their presentation first. And then we'll go into uh, my report. And I think there, there's Colin, there's Jeremy. All right. Okay, so I think I'll, I'll turn it over to you fellas. So this is kind of a, an annual presentation, just letting us know about um, 
the insurance market conditions in general and our renewal in particular. So uh, we'll let them uh, lead it off then. Great, thank you, Gord. Uh, good evening, Mayor Bridge, members of council. Thank you for the opportunity of letting us present the 2022 insurance proposal to you. I'm joined with Colin Smith from Intact Public Entities and I'll turn it over to Colin to uh, uh, start the presentation. Thanks, Jeremy and Mr. Mayor, council, staff. Um, so yeah, I just want to run through uh, the insurance report um, uh, uh, on a high level overview anyways. Uh, and if there are any particular questions about the insurance program after the fact, um, hopefully I'll answer a lot of questions as I talk, um, but we can certainly uh, look into those after the fact. So um, I will start off by uh, just talking on what's really been, I would say uh, in the insurance industry, a tumultuous two years uh, where we saw this onset of a hard market take place at the end of 2019. Um, and, and you folks experienced that. Um, you went to market and saved a bit of money and we're, we're happy to be here providing your insurance program to date. Um, but the last two years uh, certainly have been met with the uh, modest, modest increases. And, and I can tell you that um, uh, here at IPE, we've been able to keep our program stable in, in uh, comparison to the rest of the industry. So um, I think you'll find that uh, our, our program um, from as well. Um, so I'll just jump into um, the, the cost and obviously the most important part. Um, uh, what we're seeing year over year on an on a, uh, annual basis is about 15% increase bottom line um, where individual policies such as liability, uh, auto and property, those are the three main um, uh, premium drivers um, are up more than some of the other underlying coverages as well. So on the general liability front, uh, that's typically where we see most of the claims in the municipal insurance world that we're talking about. Um, we see most of the claims involves balls, uh, motor vehicle accidents on roadways, um, any, any sort of lawsuit uh, against the township typically uh, is either under liability or errors and omissions. So um, that prime... Uh, uh, that premium increase on that line of business, as we say, is, is driven by the market conditions and what the insurers would like to see in terms of rate increases in this hard market. And again, that's driven by a number of factors. And, and there's been a lot of talk about joint and liability. Well, that's one of them. Um, to Colin, uh, can you hold one second, Gord? Um, and a little bit more on, on the property, all aware. Uh, we add inflationary increases to. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, Colin, I don't know if it's just me, but. Mm -hmm. Good. We can hear you. You can hear me? Okay, hopefully it won't yeah. cut out now. Um, so, I'm not sure if it's it's been cutting in and out. So, I talked a bit about. Well, the liability premiums um, and where and what is driving those in terms of claims and, and lawsuits and injuries and, and court awards um, and, and how the market conditions are, are pretty much driving that type of uh, or the, those types of increases on the liability side. Um, and I will say, sorry, feel free to, to interrupt me again if I do cut out, but um, I was moving on to property. Uh, on the property side and, and mentioning that inflation, as you all are aware, is has gone up quite significantly. Uh, so we do try and keep pace with inflationary trends uh, to account for the replacement costs that we insure your buildings for. Uh, so we add that. Colin, your connection's going. The Sorry. Value of the buildings, um, which brings up the total insured value under the policy, and, and it does drive a little bit of premium. Sorry, Colin, you're kind of out again. Yeah. Jer uh, Jeremy, do you want to <laughs> get some of the highlights? Uh, I for Jeremy? Yeah. Yes. Our, our CAO uh, has something to say. Go ahead, Derek. Uh, Thank you, Deputy Mayor Turn. Maybe I would suggest that we um, 
we go to Gord's report sure. and then Jeremy and Colin can answer questions based on Gord's report because I think he he covers uh, some of those highlights that I think Collins was so eloquently trying to tell us before his uh, his <laughs> internet started going a little wonky on him. So maybe we should go that route um, sure. and maybe better. Thank yeah. you, Derek. Uh, Gord, do you want to do you want to take yes, the lead? I'll, I'll, I'll I'll go through mine. And as CEO Thompson said, I think I've got a sure. lot of uh, the high level points that they were doing. So as you know, the municipal uh, insurance coverage, it's not just one policy, it's a bundle of policies. So you have your liability and your property and your auto, and those are the, the big drivers here. And uh, I am happy like um, Intact does send out uh, field inspectors and they actually do look at our buildings and especially if there's been a change and we know they'll probably be looking at the power in the rain a year from now. So uh, it's kind of good. Um, uh, inflation, especially in the non-residential uh, side is just galloping right now. So I'm sure that our values aren't uh, quite maybe where they should be, but at least they are adjusted annually um, to kind of reflect a, a closer uh, estimate of replacement uh, value. So there, that component uh, is up about 17% uh, actually. Um, general liability is up 16 and uh, the other, uh, other property in that is up about 15. Now some of the other policies might be only up three to 5%, but they account for a smaller portion of the total premium. And I know it seems like we just went to RFP, but we're actually in our third year now. Um, premiums have escalated. Uh, as indicated, it's not unique to Minto. In fact, our claims history, I would say today, is better than when we did go to RFP because we were emerging from all the flood claims in 2017. And we've had more, I would say, routine items. But the market in general, and uh, maybe the big uh, the, the ghost behind everything is climate change too, because you listen to the news like province of British Columbia, they've had fires and, and floods and heat, and uh, we're operating on a, a national to a global market here. So unfortunately, um, we felt the impact of that too. So uh, around, I'd say 14 to 20 percent increases have been common, uh, speaking to uh, the county and our neighbors and that too. So um, we try and take advantage of, you know, we're working safely and uh, working with our MPP partners to hammer away on that joint and several. Um, but unfortunately, uh, there are a lot of factors that we don't control. So um, I think that's kind of the overview. Um, Unless uh, Jeremy or Colin, you want to add any other factors? I think it's Colin. Colin must have left us. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. still here. Oh, oh sorry, Colin. Yeah. Great. Great. So thank you, Gord. Uh, is there anybody have questions? Uh, is there anything Jeremy or you and Colin want to add? Uh, Mayor Bridge, go ahead. Just on the uh, on the liability, the third party liability. Uh, I know that the this, this government said they were going to fix that. Uh, now there's back on the table. We have an election coming up, so we're going to push hard on it. I'm sure Jeremy and I'm sure Colin, the industry is pushing hard on it. I always mm -hmm. hear this this uh, this thread that I get from the politicians that it won't really make any difference, which I can't understand that that would be the case. But I just wonder if you have any comments on that, Colin or Jeremy. Um, we're pushing hard for this. I don't know if we can't come up with, you know, we're in, you're not in for 5% of the liability or into millions and millions of dollars. I, there has to be a solution to this and there's other places that have done it. So would it, are, are we barking up the wrong tree here? Like the, like the province keeps telling us that even if we fix this, it, it won't make any difference on the premiums. I uh, just wanted to ask that. Who wants um, to take that? So I'll, I'll, I'll jump in there. Uh, Mayor Bridge, um, uh, hopefully my internet, I'm afraid to talk because I'm going to start start talking and, and cut out here. But oh, You're good right now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I know we've been working with the, the uh, various municipal associations behind the scenes and 
and uh, assisting with that topic for a number of years. Um, and, and I think, you know, the, the last uh, few provincial governments have been approached about the issue. Um, and, and whether or not it would make an immediate difference, I, it may, it's not like premiums would drop all of a sudden if, if there was a reform to join several. Uh, like I mentioned, it's, it's one of a multitude of factors that affects insurance rates. Um, but certainly over the long run, when those long tail uh, claims that are, are start to uh, be settled that we're you know, still dealing with in the past um, and, and the claims situation in the province starts to stabilize, I think we will see stable premiums for sure. Um, but again, it's, it, it is a complex issue and, and there's a lot of different components to it. So it's hard to say uh, one way or another, but we will continue uh, supporting the associations, municipal associations um, which I believe is primarily uh, AMO and LAS with providing information. Yeah, and I and I think what the, the what I've been getting from those groups and, and talking to some of the other politicians is the fact that what we're concerned about if we don't do something, we'll get to a point someday where we won't be able to get liability insurance, and and that would be the worst. Not not necessarily the premiums, but if you can't get it, right. if you if you if you're in an industry now that can't get it, you, it really puts a lot of. <laughs> What do you do? You're self-insuring. You can't do that. So anyways, looking forward to that. We'll keep the pressure up. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Elliott. Hi, Colin. It's good to see you again. I don't see any right now, but it's good to talk to you um, and you, you too, Jeremy. Um, since uh, your company's been merged into Intact, um, have you found any differences in your job or your company seems to be the, appear the same. You got the same people working for us and such like. Is there have you found any differences, Colin? Um, we uh, uh, through you, Mayor, to Councillor Elliott. Um, we actually we are part of the Intact umbrella, uh, but we remain an independent company. So we still are a managing general agent, just as we were as Frank Cowan Company. So uh, same people. We've actually added quite a, a number of staff. So that will help with providing our services in the, in the back end to all municipalities that we insure in the province and, and virtually no changes other than our name. And it creates a, a better asset for you then moving ahead probably, Colin. Right? I think so, yeah. There, there, there's uh, certainly in the insurers that back our program, uh, there is more strength to it too. So I, I think it's overall been a very good thing. All right, thanks. Other questions, uh, council? So basically the driving factor, Colin, from what I'm hearing is uh, inflation. That is part of it, yes. Um, yeah. In addition to the hard market, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised uh, when Councillor Alia put his hand up about volunteers. I mean, we're huge uh, in this town as well as many other municipalities. And it's really good to see that our volunteers are all uh, under the same umbrella for this policy. So. Mm -hmm. um, Seeing no other questions, Gord, is there anything else? I mean, uh, you're recommending that we go ahead with this? And yeah, yeah, I, I think that's right. As I say, it's uh, it's a very tough market out there and uh, no one's ever happy with an increase, but I think it's the, the, the best we can do under the circumstances. So I would recommend uh, accepting the renewal. Uh, no other questions for uh, Jeremy or Colin? Then uh, this, this motion is moved by uh, Mayor Bridge and seconded by Councillor Dirksen uh, that the Council of the Town of Minto receives the Treasurer's 2022 Insurance Program Renewable Report and approve the uh, renewal. Is there, um, uh, if no other questions, uh, I'll call the question then. Is there anyone opposed to this? Then that's carried unanimously. And uh, Jeremy and Colin, thank you again for for um, coming this evening and we'll look forward to seeing you guys in AMO because I know we look, that, uh, <laughs> so we look right, forward thank to working you very with much. you in 2022 thank you very yeah, much you yeah, thanks take care, take care. Okay. thank you <laughs> sorry about the connection issues too <laughs> no problem Colin thank you thank thanks. you very much uh, Gord for your report as well and helping out with this and I'll pass the chair back to our mayor thanks uh, Deputy Richardson and I'll resume the chair and I've got correspondence for information does anybody want to pull anything if not, I've got moved by Councillor Gunson, second by Councillor Anderson. The council receives the correspondence information. Uh, anybody opposed? That is carried. Um, now we have committee reports and our first one up is the health and safety. And I got uh, Caitlin here. Go ahead, Caitlin. 
Hi there, good evening council. Thank you for having me here um, tonight. I'm here to present the annual health and safety update for council. Um, as part of that, I'm gonna go over some health and safety statistics from last year, and I'm gonna bring forward the health and safety policy statement to be signed by uh, Mayor Bridges and CEO Thompson. And I'm also going to bring forward the revised workplace violence and discrimination policy. So um, I will start with the update. I believe you all have a copy of that. Um, so there's not a lot to report. Um, obviously, we haven't been full capacity for the last few years. So as you'll see, we only had um, four incidences in 2021, which is nice to see. I'd like to hope that it's because of our Joint Health and Safety's initiatives, but it's probably also due to the fact that we haven't been full capacity. Um, so we have it broken down by departments. So you'll see that in the chart there. Um, the incidents were broken down by type of incident. So the majority were injuries and illnesses. And then we had one slip, trip and fall. Um, I also have it broken down by WSIB claims. So we actually only had one claim in 2021 and we actually closed two. So we're um, starting a downward trend with those, which is a really good thing. Um, as you'll see, um, we have the WSIB claims broken down by year. Um, you can see that we haven't had any for the last few years, um, but we're still, um, we still have some of the older claims back from 2016, 2017 on our WSIB. Um, so that's kind of a breakdown of, of what's going on with health and safety for the last year. Did you have any questions on that before I go to the next portion? Questions? I comment just, uh, you know, I love the, I love the charts. Oh, I thank think you. That, that really, uh, the visual makes a big difference when you're reading. I think oh, everybody sure. else got a little thumb up for you there on that as well. Thank you very much. All right, well, I'll go into the health and safety policy. That's pretty standard. I know we do that every year. So it's just um, our recommendation that council approves and signs this along with Mayor um, CAO Thompson just to identify the commitment to health and safety that our council and our senior management have. So it's something that we like to have and showcase to our employees. Um, so if you're okay with that, I'd like to recommend that you approve that. And then the third portion of my presentation is the workplace violence and discrimination prevention policy. So we've had one for many years. This is just really an update. It was a little bit antiquated because it had been around for a while. So we just updated it to be um, more in line with the county and with other municipalities. It includes um, discrimination in there as well as the workplace violence. Um, it identifies you know, everyone's responsibilities and what to do if we have instances of that and how they're reported. So we just wanted to make sure that we had something in writing that was clear um, and explains um, how to deal with those kind of circumstances. So I would recommend that unless there's any questions that you would approve that. All right. Um, thank you, uh, Caitlin. And I really appreciate your, your experience. Oh, sorry, Derek, go ahead. You know, you're, you're, you're muted, Derek. First hey, time ever, I think I've been muted. Uh, no, it's the second time. <laughs> um, Mr. Mayor, I, I just on behalf of, of council, I'd just like to thank Caitlin. She is certainly our our, uh, our champion when it comes to health and safety. And I can tell you that we've come twofold with her involved in it. And she does just a tremendous job in keeping everybody on track. So she's, she's done a wonderful job. So I just want to pass it along. Yeah, thank you. And, and I was studying that on that line. You're, you're better at it than I am. But the fact is, uh, Caitlin has a, a wealth of experience in this, and we're just so lucky to have her come into our, our fold and, and bring that experience to us. So uh, thanks, Caitlin, for this report. And I will just now, uh, the report is moved by Councilor Dirksen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Turton. The Council of Town of Mineral receives the report CL 2022-005 regarding the 2022 annual safety update and approves the health and safety policy statement and workplace violence and discrimination prevention policy as presented. Any questions? Can I have anybody opposed? That is carried. Thank you a lot, Caitlin. Okay, Ekdev. Linda, you slipped this one in on me here. This We had to change it up. Where is she? Oh, hey, you hey, Terry? Yeah, I'm uh, taking this one for uh, for Belinda. She's unavailable right. at the moment, so. No problem, I'll let you do it. Go ahead. Um, thank you and uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so this um, report is for a housekeeping item. 
Um, during the land transfer of part seven, which is shown in the uh, registered plan that's attached to the report, um, part 11 was inadvertently omitted from the transfer to, to NAC Industries. Um, so uh, staff's intent is just to uh, rectify the situation and transfer that parcel to uh, NAC in basically the same format as we've done with all the other industrial parcels, just to make everything align, the frontages align, um, that sort of thing. So um, if there's any questions, I am willing to handle those. Thanks, Terry. Kind of a housekeeping issue. Okay. Seeing none, I've got a move by Council Dirksen, set by Deputy Mayor Turton. Council of Town Winter receives uh, Economic Development 2022-05 report regarding the sale of part lot R. P61 R21601 in the Palmer's Industrial Park to Lake Ridge Heating and Cooling and considers it a bylaw in regular session. Anybody opposed? That is carried. Okay. Oh, sorry, Deputy Mayor Turton, did you have a co comment? Yeah, Mayor Bridge, I just, I just have one question. Uh, Terry, what would happen uh, if we told Chris, sorry, we can't pass this? I, mean, um, so, I understand it's just housekeeping, but what would happen? Uh, technically, it would uh, not give them legal frontage onto Minto Road unless we uh, dedicated that uh, part 11 uh, as part of a road widening for the town. Um, so there's there's al alternative solutions, but um, yeah, that's kind of the, the worst the worst impact of it. Yeah, I think it's it's the right thing to do. There's no yeah. question. I'm just, you know, yeah. just curious. Yeah, thank you, Deputy Mayor Turton. Okay, anybody opposed? That is carried. Okay, uh, next up is Ms. Drain, and I'll try not to turn this over to uh, Judy on this. Are you not doing municipal? No, you can't. Is this yeah, the one you have? Uh, a, I have a yeah. pecuniary interest on this one, yes. That's why I'm doing it. Okay, I didn't want to get caught. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Judy. Okay, that's why I'm doing drains. Otherwise, it'd be Judy doing them. Okay, so you have the conflict on this because, as she stated before. Um, so I'll go ahead, Mike, just give us a lowdown here. We're getting yep. drains going. Sounds good. So this is this report in front of you tonight is basically just uh, the amendment to the assessment schedules for these two projects yep. that have finally come to a completion. So both projects actually came in under the estimates. Um, proposed by the uh, the engineer on, on these. So everybody's assessment's actually gonna be lower than what they were anticipating. Um, and there is a couple of property owners, if you've noticed within these that actually get money back. And uh, the one reason is they actually, uh, the one farm property actually installed the crossing prior to um, the report being adopted. So they actually incurred all those costs on their own and now they're getting reimbursed for that, as well as another one actually, uh, just the location of the, of the drain on their property uh, renders about five acres of, of their property unusable um, without a crossing. So uh, just in their, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, their allowances yeah. for damages and stuff like that. They actually get money back for that. So. If there's any questions, uh, nope. anybody has any questions? <laughs> any questions? I'm not seeing any. I, I'm just happy that we're getting these trains done. Like, yep. um, it's been a lot of work, and and I see a lot of work being done out there. So it's it's great to see them complete and nice that they're coming under budget and that, that yep. people are getting a little reduction. This is, yeah. Okay. Yep. So I have uh, moved by Councilor Anderson, set by Deputy Mayor Turk. The Council of Town of Minto receives the report from the Treasurer and Roads Drainage Manager regarding municipal drain 23 and drain 20 and 117 amended, assessments for information and passes the, so the associated individual bylaws and open sessions. Anybody opposed? Seeing none. For you, Mayor Bridge, uh, sure. Deputy Mayor Turton is just trying to rejoin the meeting. Oh. He, he's been dropped off, so. Oh, okay. Is he coming back in here? Maybe we went out to get another uh, wine or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Not see him. You just have him moving it, so we may have to have another mover on that one. Was he gone when I moved it? Yes. Okay, then uh, can I get, uh, yeah, Jeff, I've moved by Councillor Gunson, 
I would move by Councillor Anderson, second by Councillor Gutson. The Council of Town Manager receives the report of the Treasurer's Roads and Drainage Manager regarding Municipal Drain 23 and Drain 20 and 117 amended assessments for information and past and associated with individual bylaws to open session. Anybody opposed? Seeing none, that's carried. Thank you. Okay. Moved by Councilor Anderson, second by Councilor Gutson. The Town of Mental Committee of Adjustment convenes in. Oh, I got that already. Right, that we did all that. I'm five. I'm doing double sided things here. Uh, I turn it over to uh, Judy. You can take this over now. Go ahead, Judy. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. Um, so we have uh, Mark Robertson and uh, Todd Rogers, our wastewater and water managers, to present a report to us tonight. Uh, this is on the uh, SCADA roadmap. It's a pretty technical uh, document they laid on us for this meeting. So I'm hoping they can uh, do some explaining. and I'll turn it over to you, gentlemen. Thank you, Councillor Dirksen. Um, as mentioned today, we have the water wastewater SCADA roadmap. Um, as as Council knows, SCADA is very important to the operations uh, with both water and wastewater, uh, as well as uh, data collection um, that we use to generate a lot of the reports. Uh, some of those reports uh, council got to see last week in the, in the annual water reports, um, as well as a number of other uh, water and wastewater reports that get sent off to the ministry. SCADA generates most of the data that's put in place. Um, SCADA uh, was originally installed uh, a little over 20 years ago. Uh, right after the Walkerton tragedy, it came as one of the recommendations out of the inquiry um, there. I just thought that was important to note. Um, obviously, a lot of the equipment has been upgraded over time, but there are st still some pieces of equipment that are original to that uh, original installation. Um, we, we had our system integrators, Aramosa Engineering, uh, take on this roadmap. A roadmap is basically just another word for an asset management plan. Um, we took our took our SCADA system and we first uh, looked at the, the whole uh, system, created an inventory of all of our products. Uh, once, once we had a, an inventory that we could uh, manage, um, we then did a quality assessment on, on each piece of inventory. Um, breaking that inventory out into four different categories. Um, PLCs was one of them, hardware and software, another, uh, net, the network itself, and then uh, data management. Uh, as mentioned before, um, the PLCs, they are one of the biggest pieces of the cost estimate that was, uh, the, that came out of the roadmap. And they're one of the original uh, pieces of hardware that was installed uh, when, with the original SCADA system. So they're, they're 20 plus years old and uh, they've been well used uh, by the town. Uh, I believe Aramosa and town staff did a, a good job putting this report together. Um, creating this report, it gives us an opportunity to update our five and 10 year capital plans moving forward as well as uh, any uh, future annual capital budgets requests that will be bringing to council. With that, uh, if any council has any questions, we'd be happy to, to answer. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Oh, I think you guys are getting off lucky tonight. Okay, I'm gonna call the question then. Uh, the recommendation is moved by Councillor Gunston and seconded by Councillor Anderson. The Council of the Town of Mint will receive the information re information presented in this report and consider it when reviewing future capital budgets for the public works slash water and wastewater departments. Anybody think of any questions? Okay, is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, I will declare that carried. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. And I will return the chair, doesn't say that, but I think I'm gonna return the chair back to Mayor Bridge. Yeah, you are, thank you. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Councillor, Councillor uh, Dirksen. Okay, so yes, yeah, so we're back and uh, other businesses disclosed. Anybody got anything? I have one quick item. 
I was happy to see. And I was, uh, even though I'm down south here, I get the Wellington Advertiser, I, I peruse it, and I see that the Roads Committee at, at the county level have approved uh, ATVs for county, or well, well recommended to be approved for this uh, coming council meeting to uh, have ATVs finally go on uh, one of the county roads, which I think this council worked with and hard hard fought, decided that we would do it locally. And then quite a few of the municipalities did it as well. And now to have it across the whole county, it makes it a lot easier to, uh, to uh, make sure that uh, all the rules are followed. So I'm happy that we're finally got it through all that. We don't have to worry about if I'm crossing a county road or down a county road. So, Anyway, so it's nice to see that. So I just want to bring that up. If you hadn't seen it in the Wellington Advertiser, it should be passed hopefully on the uh, on the uh, 31st. Anybody else, anything? Okay. Uh, moved by Council Dirksen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Turton. The committee of whole convenes the regular council. Anybody opposed? Seeing none. No, any notice of the motion? You don't see any. Uh, moved by Council Anderson, seconded by Council Gutson. The Council of the Town Mitter ratifies the motions made in the Committee of the Whole. Anybody opposed? That's carried. Bylaws. Moved by Deputy Mayor Turton, seconded by Councilor Gutson. The bylaw number 2022 to provide the amendment of the Municipal Drain 21 17 2019 Town of Minto Bylaw 2019 91 for the collection of amendment of assessments be read for a second and third time and passed open council of COC of the corporation. And I don't see Judy here, so that she's anybody else opposed? Judy sustained. Okay, carried. Uh, Moved by Councilor Gutson, second by Councilor Anderson, the bylaw number 2022-23 to provide the amendment to municipal drain 23-2019 Town of Minto bylaw 2019-90 for the collection and the amendment assessment be read for a second and third time in passed open council seal seal of the corporation. Anybody opposed? That is carried. Moved by Councilor Dirksen, second by Councilor Anderson, the bylaw number 2022-24 to authorize the sale of lands on Minto Road, Palmerston Industrial Park to Lake Ridge. Heating and Cooling, Inc. Be read first, second, and third time passed over council and COC of the corporation. Anybody opposed? That is carried. Moved by Council Dirksen, sent by Deputy Mayor Turton, the bylaw number 2022-25 to confirm the actions of the Council of Corporation of Town of Middle respecting a meeting held March 22nd, 2022. Be read first, second, and third time and passed open council and COC of the corporation. Anybody opposed? That is carried. Moved by Council Anderson, second by Council Gutson, the Council of the Town of Minnow adjourns to meet again at the call of the mayor. Thanks everybody for a good meeting. Anybody opposed? That is carried. Derek, did you have a question? Hang on. No, no, just wanted to say goodbye. Okay, we're gonna say goodbye. Bye everybody. Take, Take care. Bye. Yeah, bye-bye.